So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so that whenever a user creates a running club, it is tied to that specific user. And we're going to do this because we don't want it to happen where somebody can vandalize your running club and people who don't actually own your running club can edit it because you know there's gonna be a couple jokers in there who are going to, I don't know, put cuss words or modify your running club to put cuss words on it and we don't want that for our users. So what we're gonna have, we're going to have what's called a security context holder that is going to pull the user information from the cookie. And we're going to have this thing called an authentication object. So we'll say authentication. And then we're gonna go into here, we'll have authentication and we will use a security context holder to get the context and then actually get the user. So we'll go here and this is going to be get authentication. And then after this, we're going to do a quick check to see if essentially if the user is actually logged in. So if the user is not logged in, what is going to happen is that this null check here or this instance of check will not trigger and it will not blow up our software. Okay, so we go to here, we're going to have an on anonymous authentication token. So if it is not an authentic a anonymous authentication token, what we're going to have is we're going to actually get the username just like this. So we'll have username is equal to authentication dot, and then we're going to get the name. This is going to get the username and then we're going to return it. So we return it. And if it does not trigger, we will just return null. Okay, so that looks good. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to go into our actual repository here. So we'll go into our implementation, if I can find it. <laughs> So we go into our impl file. We're gonna have our club service right here and we'll find our save club. So we're gonna do this for the save and we're going to do this for the update as well too. So let's say if the user wants to update it, we also need to have it there, but the most important one is going to be the save. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna have string username is equal to security util. So we're going to bring in our nice little static method that we have right here. And we're going to get the session user. And then after we get the session user, what we're gonna do, of course, we're going to go down right here and we are going to set the user entity. So we have our user entity, we have user, and then we have our user repository. So we say user, let me see here. And I think we actually need to bring in our user repository because we don't have it. Yeah, we don't have it. So we go up here, uh, user repository. So we'll have user repository, user repository, semicolon. We'll bring this down. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to inject this. So pretty simple stuff. Uh, excellent. Hopefully I didn't bring in a user there. So we go here, go repository. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to go user repository. It's equal to user repository. So now we have access to all of our nice little methods right here. And then here we're going to have the user repository and we're going to use the session to actually get the user. So we're going to pass in here. So we're going to say username. And the next thing that we have to do is we actually have to set the user. So after we map it, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to say club, and then we are going to set created by, and we don't have this actually because we actually need to create it. We are going to go into here and we are going to have a many to one. And this many to one is going to have a join column. And this join column is going to be name. We're gonna say created by, and we're gonna say nullable is equal to false. And we're gonna have private, we'll have the user entity, and then we will have a created by. That looks good. Looks like all of our IntelliSense is working good. And I'm gonna separate these. I think they little space right there might help them look a little bit better. And also we need to go into our mappers. While we're at it, let's go ahead, uh, take care of our mapper. So we're gonna go into our mapper right here. So we go here and we'll say dot created by. So we'll say dot created by. In our club DTO, I forgot. We also need to go, forgot. We also need to go into our DTO and uh, do the exact same thing. So we're gonna say user entity. So we're gonna go user entity and then we will call this user. And then after that, what we are going to do is we'll go ahead, bring this in, of course. And this is gonna be created by, I don't know why I called it user. So we'll say created by. So we go into here, 
And now we have this so that we can actually use it in our DTO and map it over. So we're gonna go club and then we will go get created by and that looks good. So let's also do the same exact thing up here. So we'll say dot created by is equal to club dot get created by and that will make it so that we have all of our mappers good to go. So we go in here and what we wanna do is we want to set the created by, and then we're, of course, we are going to pass it this user right here. So that is looking awesome. So let's go back into our actual club surface implementation, and let's go ahead. So we've got that figured out, and it's going to save it. Everything looks good for the save. Let's go down to the update, and let's do the exact same thing. And we can actually copy and paste this right here. So we're gonna go copy, then we are going to go paste, and then we will do the exact same thing right here. So after we map it, this is when we are going to go club, and then we are going to set created by. So set created by is equal to user just like this. All right, now what we need to do is we need to test it. So let's go ahead, let's test it, and let's make sure that the actual uh, code is working. And it's going to give us an error. And I'm gonna show you guys the error just to make sure that you are aware of this and how this actual error works and how you actually combat it. So we are going to get an error in a second and I'm going to do this on purpose. The first error, so we'll go into here, we'll say create running club, we'll say test. Uh, we'll give this like a real picture or so, and then we'll say test right here. So let's go ahead and what you're, what's gonna happen is that you're going to get this constraint created by of relation clubs. There's two ways that you can handle this. And for 90% of people, you what you want to do is you want to go into your tables and you just want to delete everything except for the roles. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop everything. And the reason I'm gonna drop it is because there's no users that are tied to our actual club. And if we have all this data that's not it's basically corrupted. And if we have all this corrupted data, it doesn't really make any sense. But if you were doing this in a production app, you would not drop tables like this. What you would do is you would just write your own SQL script to go in and add this foreign relationship. But it's going to give you this constraint error due to the fact that it doesn't want you deleting stuff that is tied together. So that is the way, so that's pretty much how that is working. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead into here, make sure that you log in, make sure that you're, if you don't log in, it will likely give you errors. We're gonna go ahead, we're going to log in. Of course, we're gonna have all these annoying pop-ups, but go to create running club. We'll call this Charlotte running club, just like this. And we're going to give it a photo URL and we're gonna call it test content. We're gonna go ahead, we're going to hit create and we need to go into our user, or we need to go into our clubs and we need to actually make sure that the data that we want is actually there and it is actually tied to a running club. So if we go here, we look at it, we have our created by, it is successfully populated our table and we now have a uh, running club that is tied to a user. But we can't stop there. We need to also test our update. So let's go ahead and let's do the exact same thing. Let's test out the update. So bring this back up. We'll f let's make sure, let's refresh to make sure that the actual running club is there. So Charlotte running club is there. Then we're going to go to edit and then we'll go here and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to call it the edit and our edit works perfectly. Uh, it is tied to the user. Now what we can do is finally move on to probably one of the more difficult parts of the video and make it so that the actual user uh, or people who do not own the running club do not see these buttons because like I said, we don't want people to be able to vandalize other people's running clubs. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smack that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.